And now, America's Midweek Review. First um, actual video podcast here with your host Yanni. Hope you guys had a great week and uh, excited, just man, excited to be here with you guys today. Uh, a lot of stuff on the agenda uh, to talk about, and we have 30 minutes to get through everything we got to get through. So it's like a race horse, moving and going. Um, uh, but uh, yes, it is September 16th, 2020, Wednesday, obviously. And um, just want a little bit of housekeeping here, though, guys. So excited to have you guys here, man. It's uh, it's different uh, setting, lighting, and get everything uh, you know ready to go and ready to roll. And then the butterflies trying to fly into your your stomach information. You know the fluttering. You know they do the little fluttering dance or whatever they do. Um, but you get yourself prepared and design that mental toughness that will carry you through. You're running through the mud. The mud is so thick. The mud is deep. The mud is wide. When you go left, you go to right. It doesn't matter. The mud is there. But um. So excited though, but you can also found, find episodes over on the SoundCloud as well, um, platform at the America's Voice and Yanni. You can find it right there. But I'm excited though, guys, but we have 47 days, 47 days, ladies and gentlemen, till we can vote. We can represent our countries, ladies and gentlemen. You know, America takes a center stage. Look at it. America. He comes in with the red, white, and blue pumps. You know, got the red, white, and blue skirt. Well, I guess pants if it's a man, okay? But America comes through and takes center stage, bright, shining so bright for everyone to see. And we should be very happy about us having the ability to operate and to um, utilize our constitutional right to go out and vote. Put it in a ballot. Don't be scared by people trying to t uh, intimidate you and have you stay in the house because of COVID-19. It's like nine months later, you know? <laughs> Remember that movie, Three Days Later? The guy wakes up and everything's all jacked up. I think it was 28 days later. Whatever it is. You guys know the movie, right? All, every zombie movie is the same thing. If you go to sleep, I'm sure somebody, side note, I'm sure somebody in those zombie movies, they went to sleep. You didn't see them on the movie, but they were in the movie and they went to sleep. They woke up and then all of a sudden zombies was right there because everybody was just awake. I mean, I, people, the movie, obviously, they're making the movie, they're awake. Anyways, side note. But that rabbit hole. But being excited to be able to vote. But President Donald Trump has been on a war path for the most part. Nobel Peace Prize, you know, two nominations within a month, less, well, less than two weeks, actually. That's absolutely fantastic. You know, he's actually pumping the pump. The guy's working hard every single day. People don't give him the credit for the work that he does, but I'm gonna give him his credit. People say, well, you just a sympathizer for the president. You just love you. No, I'm not a special preacher for the president. I am an independent. I like to go straight down the middle and give the news just like you guys like it every single day, right? That's how we do it. But President Trump has been going all over the place. And you know, these rumors have been going about this 2019 coming out of a book and stuff like that. Political hit pieces, they come every single day. I mean, President Trump is sitting right there in the White House and you don't have to destroy or blow up the White House with any type of uh, nuclear weapon, biological warfare, or anything like that. All you need is the media. They will go and they will attack. They got missiles and tomahawks and, oh, excuse me. Is that politically correct to say tomahawks? I'm not sure. You know, with all the Indian thing going on, you know, the, the <laughs> Washington Redskins. I'm still going to call them Washington Redskins, even though I'm not watching football right now. Um, someone told me, I heard from another person, from another person, and the first person was a bird, said that uh, they're not as politicized as the NBA. So there's a chance that I might watch an Eagles game uh, this season, possibly. Muy, muy, muy poquito. The small chance I might see that, uh, do that. But President Trump's accomplishments have been flying under the radar, and people don't give President Trump the credit that he deserves, uh, for the most part. The, you know, is he, is he eloquent as Obama? No. Is he as polished as Obama? No. Does he have the, the charisma and speech like Obama? No, he doesn't. But one thing he does have, President Trump has guts. You have to give it to him. He fought so hard. I mean, let me tell you what, even probably me, <laughs> someone going, Build that wall. Build that wall. Everybody's chanting right here. I'm just cheering to build the wall. Everyone's bearing the wall and they're going crazy. And me personally, I said, I'm going to build the wall. Everybody's excited. Everyone's cheering. The enthusiasm is blowing their minds crazy. There's brain matter all over the place. People are looking crazy, right? But 
they're saying build the wall. So I get there and get to watch. I'm looking around and then you start feeling the pressure. Then you start feeling Comey coming in, having those little problems. But anyways, side note. But I'll probably be like, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I tried. No, I, 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 come on. I, I try harder than that. But over at Breitbart, it says exclusively nearly 800 military family members signed an open letter in support of President Donald Trump. And the picture I'm looking at right here is a beautiful picture. You got, it's a black guy. Oh my gosh, it's a black guy. And he, he has his arm around Donald Trump. Everybody cry. Boo hoo. He is not a racist. In fact, here are two uh, lies right here on one beautiful picture as they're taking selfies of themselves. Melania looking gorgeous right there next to him. Uh, this guy's a black guy, and there's a lady too. Oh, so he's not a misogynist either. Oh my goodness, that darn President Trump. What are we going to do about him? And they all look happy. And so I'm going to put a nail in the coffin of this one, he can't sell a military. Uh, they look pretty happy to me. Two, that he's a racist. Oh, he's standing right next to a black man. Three, he's a misogynist. There's a lady right there, and she is a girl or a woman, whatever you want to call it, right? I mean, if you want to get technical about it, is she a girl or a woman? She's of the female species, right? Yeah, I guess she is. So, nearly 800 military family members, including Gold Star families, have signed an open letter to voice their support for President Donald Trump in the face of the attacks of the mainstream media. Oh, those evil mainstream media guys, let me tell you what, they're like the troll under the bridge. They don't, they don't want to go across. They're sitting there. They have no car to go across the bridge on, but they don't want you to cross over in your nice 2021 uh, Mercedes Benz uh, S Class or whatever you want to call it. Make up your car. Here you go. Just want to drive over the bridge. <laughs> nope. Here they come. They don't want you to drive over the bridge. Okay. But so they hurl these lies all the time. But in the uh, in the face of attacks of the mainstream media on his patriotism and care for the military, remember he rebuilt the military. You guys remember that, right? President Trump rebuilt the military. The, they were depleted. And I know this for a fact because I had conversations with multiple people out there and they were telling me that they had uh no flag jackets no vest protection they were out there in the field so just imagine that it's like one of those horror movies you get hit in the chest and there's body matter and everything all over the place and people are sad and they're crying there's sand all on the blood and you're like what the hell's going on around here um so lies upon lies but mr president uh there are hundreds of thousands of military spouses in this country who are forced into a silent majority but we do support you we do not believe the lies and rumors and other the others try to spread we stand tall with you that is american patriotism i love the way when people start speaking like that in this country it gives us that hope like the heart beating of that hope saying i'm going to kick up dust and if you talk trash i'm going to rip off your neck and i'm going to have a barbecue hold everyone's gonna come in for a barbecue we're gonna have lots of fun and uh we're going to have some watermelon, too, if you want to. That's fantastic, too. But the, the letter uh, uh, signatories include Gold Star families, military spouses, military mothers, military sons and daughters, and veterans, according to the authors. The letter garnered more than 700 signatures in three days and has co uh, continued to collect more after, signature, after the signature deadline, they said. Um, they said the mainstream uh, statement to Bre Breitbart News uh, accompanying the letter they decided to write in observing of the liberal military, the spouses appearing to speak out for all of them collectively. They said in, uh, in the last week, the false narrative had been uh, perpetrated uh, regarding the military communities and um, uh, perception of the commander in chief as the conservative military spouses, veterans and families and members refused to maintain si remain silent in the ardent support for President Trump knowing that he holds the military community, which we are part of in great esteem. President Trump has been going, hitting hard for the military families ever since he's been in office. Guys, the facts are there. You can say go to government.gov or whatever it may be, but you go to the, the alphabet soup media networks and we have the battle against them because they're out to defeat us and try to take us out. But, you know, MSNBC, CNN, and as I say their names, you know, I lose some intelligence. Where am I? I feel like Joe. Come on, man. Right. Absolutely. So go over to Breitbart. Check that out. That's fantastic. But no, President Trump keeps moving. He, he nails him hard. He hits him hard every single time. He's like a bull in the china shop. When he came in first, he was breaking everything. He was breaking everything on purpose. But now here you go. Uh, less than three weeks ago, we have him sign a, a, a deal with Israel and um, the United States of uh, the, uh, the Arab States, uh, the Arab Emirates, And um now we have Donald Trump previews five additional Arab countries to sign uh, the uh, Abraham Accords deal with um, Israel. 
And so we have another peace deal coming in right here. And I'm looking at the picture, such a beautiful picture. You have Arabs and people from Israel and you have President Trump. What a beautiful contrast. When you look back at the prior administration, I am not here to bash or beat up President Obama. Not in this segment. We'll get, we'll get to him and tear him up later. I think my political dogs are hungry. Anyways, but it says Donald Trump reviews five additional Arab countries to sign the uh, Abraham Accord deals. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys understand how huge this is. You have three different countries representing um, the world right here, which represents peace. You don't have people chanting death to America. They're saying we want to stand with America. And not just that, the ice lady, the icing on the cake is Israel. The icing on the cake. They are surrounded by enemies trying to push them off into the sea. But it says President Donald Trump on Tuesday said that five additional Arab countries were interested in signing a peace deal with Israel. Wow. We're very far down the road with five additional countries, Trump told reporters at the White House during the meeting in Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But that's another one right there. That's another good article to go out and read and check it out. But Donald Trump is cool as a cucumber, right? You got the ranch over there. Here you walk in. <clears throat> Oh, who's that? Was that the president? Oh, that's the president, right? He's over there talking to a guy, then another guy comes over. Obviously, there's like 30 people around. He's so cool. The whole atmosphere of the room is cool. You walk up to the president, he's like sitting in ranch. I'm like, what the hell's going on around here? The president is sitting in ranch. He's that cool. Cooler than a cucumber. And he's not orange this time. He's like green, but it's all good. But it's the president, right? You know, sick. Everything's great. Uh, president Donald Trump is fantastic, and it's a lot of fun. I tell you guys what. Every single time when President Trump is gone, you guys will miss his influence. You guys will miss his fight. You guys will miss his talking trash. I can guarantee it. You guys will miss that. And plus, a lot of news networks will be out of business, too. Um, mainly some of the ones that I mentioned earlier. But we're not out here to make enemies. We're here to be friends and make sure that the news is distributed properly because there's a lot of bias. See me? I'm not biased for the most part. Well, I do have some biases. But I, I, tried, I tried to sway to the left or to the right. I tried to look at the, everything straight down the middle and give truth to everyone. Um, so, you know, when they process, they're like, oh, this is all good. But it says, A.G. William Barr, uh, the coronavirus lockdowns, you know, and I love the way William Barr, he's, he's turning out. He's, at first, he seemed like he was a little gun shy. He seemed like he wanted to, uh, you, you know, kind of, maybe, maybe he was building rapport with people. Maybe he was just looking at everything. I think that's probably what it was. But right now, Bill Barr, he is like a Viking and he is going for blood. I'm telling you what, there's blood on his what's up, blood on your loafers, Mr. Barr. He has blood on his loafers and he is out to make sure that justice is served. And I'm so glad that he's here right now in the time that we're living in because we need justice right now. With all the anarchy and the arsons and the fires, we'll get to those guys in a little bit. It's crazy out there. But he said coronavirus lockdowns is the greatest intrusion on civil liberties since slavery. <gasps> there goes that word. Oh, my God, Mr. Django, put those chains on my wrist. See, the slavery word caused most black people to be triggered. Me, I don't get triggered. You go to a job, slavery, especially if you get sal uh, salary, right? Slavery, salary. They own you. 70 hours a week, you're there slaving, working your fingers to the bone, right? But anyways... Attorney William Barr said Wednesday evening, other than slavery, which is a different kind of restraint, coronavirus lockdowns were the greatest intrusion on civil liberties in American history. He started to paint a picture. I see Bill Barr. He, you know, he's like that guy. Remember, it was that guy uh, with the uh, Bob uh, Davis or something like that in the, uh, the 70s. He had the big old afro and he'd be painting pictures to everyone for everyone. I used to he just talk so soft. It's like, yeah, we're just making the tree. Get a little bit of green there. Oh, you get a little bit of that color there. Oh, and you do that and you're making the tree. Uh, but that guy was awesome. And it's like a white guy. I remember the first time I saw him. I'm like a white guy with an afro. And it was like a curly afro too. You, you know, I guarantee you, you see him walking down through Watts back in the 70s. Come on, man. Snap me some skin, right? Talking that jive. You probably talk, walk funny too, right? You know, brothers be walking. Uh, but Barr's comments came during a Constitutional Day celebration at Hillsdale College, a great college, by the way. I'm about to take one of those courses there at Hillsdale, so I recommend you guys take a course at Hillsdale, too, as well. Get your constitutional muscle working. Commemorating the, uh, the date of 1789 when the Constitution was signed by the Framers in Philadelphia. Throughout the coronavirus pa pandemic, Barr has expressed alarm and restrictions imposed on the authorities uh, of the First Amendment rights and uh, particularly freedom of, of religion. You know, they were 
restricting people from really you can go to a bar you can go buy marijuana let's go get pot man yeah man let's get some pot that's great that's open i guess people will go crazy without the pot too but people go crazy without their faith they need their religion you understand what i'm saying you agree right in april bars department of justice has issued a memorandum on all u.s attorneys to be on the lookout spyglass coming out on local directors to see who would be violating the constitutional rights of civil liberties of individual citizens. He explained that while there might be reasonable tempor uh, temporary restrictions on some First Amendment rights of the sake of public for the sake of public health, we should not become an overbearing uh, infringement. That is absolutely true. I walked into a place, a store uh, today and my mask was down like here, just a little skewed, just a little over my nose. You know, I'm, it's so great you guys can see me. This is fantastic. You know, get all colorful and stuff like that. When I'm normally, when I'm normally doing the audience, you can't see me. I'm normally spinning in circles, you know what I'm saying? Banging the walls, you know, having the, having the microphone on mute. Just kidding. Um, it's like, that guy sounds like a mental patient. No, that's not me. Those are people out there trying to destroy the country. Um, but the, the other day, uh, today I was going and I had the mask like this, right? And so I'm going and the guy was, in one script was like, you know, up. I'm just like, I'm not spewing things out of my nose. I breathe in. In fact, you might be doing something to me, right? So not as soon as I walk up, 10 nine eight seven ten seconds i walk by him another guy says oh could you put you i'm like the mask police the mask marauders and you know we have some great news because we have some opposite things going on here a little later into the program get ready for that absolutely the doj civil rights division uh subsequently took a stand against the state and local governments that were just restricting religious services in, to extreme extent and on that note guys what i'm saying is uh religious liberties bill barr is turning into a stalwart for the constitution if you're ever confused about him just being an average Republican, um, you know, as the stats, you know, go as of late, you know, before you come in, it's like, well, he was in the Bush administration. You, and you remember the Bushes, right? They were kind of like, uh, not your conservatives. They were Republicans. And there are a lot of rhinos off in that Republican soup. It was amazing. Um, but his, his, you know, his stats, you know, from, from then back then, he's, you know, he's becoming more of a, more of a conservative, more of a, a, a constitution uh, list of a conservative. You know, the Department of Justice, you know, to me, I look at him, he's a he's a, some, a sort of firewall. He's a firewall. That's what he is for the Constitution. He's starting to build up these rights because he got into a full blitzer. I'm going to talk about that real quick, too. Um, but alongside coupled with the Constitution, frequently of late, he's been talking about the tactics used by the Obama era in the Department of Justice intelligence agencies, the flaws and the problems all the way down to the voter ID situation. Guys, we can't be ignorant about what's going on out there. We have to make sure. I remember when you know, they talk about Paul Revere. We have to be Paul Revere's of 2020, 2021. I'll be like that lady that's in the store counting pennies. She's there like for 10 minutes. And she's a coupon clipper too. That's one, two. She has like 120 pennies. And you're like, oh my gosh, I got to get to work. Well, that's kind of your fault for not planning anyways. But still, she's counting these pennies. Anyways, um... But that's on Bill Barr. But I'm going to take up more on the other side of the break. You guys stay right there on the Midweek Review. I'm your host, Yanni. Fired up to have you guys here. And great to have you guys in visual sight. Be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, here on the Midweek Review. And obviously, you know who I am, your host, Yanni. You know, so much fun talking about uh, these Democrats that are trying to claw up the country and take, take the country down a path that, you know, everyone's not really interested in going down. I can see if I was like 
I just want to see something different for a change. But why would I mess that up and we have a great economy? Why would I do that and, and, and unemployment's dropping still like a stone, even in the midst of a pandemic, which everyone wants to make you believe that we're, it's February and the first cases are popping up and people are dying and we're on the spike. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so far from that, um, but they want to keep you in that, that fro frozen in that state of mind. <clears throat> but back to Bill Barr. So exciting seeing him kind of going fist to cuffs on these guys, kind of going at it. I mean, you're starting to see his mental, physical toughness. And you, you, guys, as he's owning the Senate, you know, he's sitting there and, and he's just sit, plain look on his face, just nice and calm. Answer the question, Mr. Bill Barr. Did you, did, what did you do with the detonators? What did you do? Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's diehard. Mr. Bill Barr. Did you, did you know that they're keeping kids in cages? Well, I had no, no idea that they're, you know, I thought that was an Obama, you know, Obama era, um, uh, uh, Obama era policy. Uh, um, um, uh, President Trump has been doing his best to try to uh, quash and, uh, and he's just cool. Another cool cucumber. He's like cool cucumber number two. That's William Bill Barr. But, you know, he had the, Wolf Blitzer had the belly up to the bar. You know, he's not very smart, you know, journalist. In fact, he's not a journalist at all in my book. Um, but Bill Barr owns them several times. Uh, they had a 10 minute interview. This is about a week and a half ago. And I've been wanting to talk about it, but in the midst of things, you have one program and you're talking about stuff and it kind of gets swept under the rug and it's like down there with the dust bunny. She's like, how did you get down there? You're whispering to the paper. How did you get down there? You're waking up in your sleep. It's an amazing thing. But Wolf Blitzer looked kind of thirsty and, and I, I loved his thirst. He, he, well, he always looks thirsty. And he looks kind of parched. But Bill Barr kindly, politely came up on his show and asked me if he'd like, you know, a drink. Blitzer was like, oh, dumb. You know, he had this look, dumb look on his face. You know what I mean? You know, like when he stepped in the bar, you know, this look like this here. Yeah, that look. Um, and so he gets completely owned. He doesn't know what happened to him. And, 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 and so I'm looking at this interview and it's soft. It's not softball questions. How can I say it? He's trying to strike up strife in between Trump and Bill Barr. He's trying to strike up strife or doing something as dumb as asking him what black people think about the shooting of uh, uh, Mr. Blake. Bill Barr is not black. He has no clue. In fact, he didn't wake up and go, yeah, man, I'm Bill Barr. I got an afro. I'm running the Department of Justice. You know, got a little suitcase and he has watermelon right there in his suitcase with some chicken with a warmer. No, that's not Bill Barr. Bill Barr straight down the line. And so he starts to own them. You know, it makes me wonder how these people on television, these amateurs, you know, it's amateur hours, they're bankrolling these guys, you know, full age drinking moon bats, ravaging the streets of the USA. You know, and they're still clueless, you know, um, and they don't ask questions, you know, they, they, they don't care about it, but they'll go and they'll watch and watch and they'll bash the president. Um, over on The Blaze, <laughs> so funny. Bill Barr gets owned um, uh, by Wolf Blitzer, uh, 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 owns Wolf Blitzer on mail-in voting. Wolf Blitzer interviewed Bill Barr on Wednesday and discussed a mail-in voting fraud. Like I said, this was about two weeks ago, a week and a half, two weeks ago, uh, fraud security. And says Barr owned Blitzer on a, un is an understatement. The interview um, was when Barr asserted his primary concerns about sending a ballot to every resident on the voter rolls. And then asked him, Blitzer, do you think that's the way to run a country or uh, to run a vote? Think about this. It's like I'm flying over the city. In fact, your city. And I'm just, I'm going to, you know, they have a leaflet. You know, they used to back in the day, throw the leaflets out there. They come down with little parachutes. And I'm just going to sprinkle them out all over the United States of America. What do you think is going to happen? Are people going to mail in whatever. Let's say you got lots of Democrats or lots of Republicans out there. And it, people could be susceptible to doing it on any side. But let's just say the Democrats are doing it. And you got these leaflets come down. Oh, it comes in the mail. You're looking at it it's like, hmm. I see. This is in the mail. Hmm. What should I do? I'm going to vote. Oh, I have another one. And all of a sudden, these leaflets are coming down. You get three chances to vote for the person. The one person, you get three chances to vote for them. How catastrophic would that be? And so Bill Barr goes in. He says, is that, is that a way to run a vote? As you think about it, is that a way to run a country? Do you want to run your country like that? Bill Barr sits and he owns them and this is what he says to him because you can see that bill barr starts getting a little irritated wolf blitzers you know saying his little thing bill barr is like sitting back and like but here's a little different between what you see with bill barr before bill barr before like i said he was cool calm collected like i displayed 
earlier. Hope I did a good Bill Barr impression too, ladies and gentlemen. But Bill Barr, he came up a little bit different. You can see he got that little, you know, like, you, you, you see him telling me that, <laughs> I'm looking like, whoa, that's a different Bill Barr I've never seen before. And so it's fantastic. Cut number as far as one. widespread place. fraud, we haven't seen that since. Uh, well, since we, have, we haven't had the kind of widespread use of mail-in ballots that's being proposed. We've had absentee ballots from people who request them from a specific address. Now what we're talking about is mailing them to everyone on the voter list when everyone knows those voter lists are inaccurate. People who should get them don't get them, which is what has been one of the major complaints in states that have tried this in, in municipal elections. And uh, people who get them are not the right people. They're people who have replaced the, the previous occupant and they can make them out. And sometimes multiple ballots come to the same address with a whole genera several generations of occupants. Do you think that's a way to run a vote? Total and ultimate ownage. <laughs> that's how you get owned. In fact, I'm recommending Bill Barr do ownage classes, right? he would be there. First of all, he says, I'm going to show you how to have a poker face. First of all, I'm going to show you how to have a poker face. That's what he'll say to people. But that's over um, at uh, Fox News and over at The Blaze, too, as well. The arsonist. You guys heard about the arsonist, right? That that um, got caught by an organ lady. Man, well, she owned him, man. My goodness. Over on The Blaze, too, as well. The art organ woman. Uh, a brim tilt to the blaze you guys are a fantastic website man lots of good stuff there um and uh glenn beck and uh, mark levin all you guys put together is fantastic but look at the picture here i don't know if it's burning fires or something like that but this woman here she is on a mission and she's like look you can tell you can tell you know uh, me and my wife we were watching poltergeist too the second one the other side right the movie's okay i remember watching it back in the 80s but we we're watching that movie the other night and the acting just wasn't getting me wasn't convincing i'm looking at this picture this picture is convincing it's fantastic armed organ woman holds suspect art suspected arsonist at gunpoint until cops arrive as wildfires rage on yep there we go along the west coast law enforcement has nabbed several suspected arsonists including multiple arrests in oregon once armed Oregonian was ready once an, uh one armed Oregonian was ready to defend her property and now has her story going viral on social media social media is fantastic isn't it, ladies and gentlemen everyone's talking on social media cat cast posted on, the, on our video on facebook over the weekend showing her taking action against a man who she believed was an arsonist on her property uh, um on the ground and eventually taking him back uh to the uh, um on a property and eventually going into the back of a police car so you call you get him you call the police and Watch it. Your, watch your head going to score a car. I remember a, a comedian had an observation like many years ago, and he said this. He says, "They'll sit and beat you up, stomp you out. You like black and blue. It's like your blood is physically. You see your blood on the ground, on the pavement. And then when they pick you up, they dust you off. Right? Watch your head while you get into the squad car. What? What the hell's going on? That's what they do to you. And so, but she took it into her own hands. It kind of reminds me of uh, Charles Bronson. Boy, did he have the, they had the, the, the death wish. Dun, dun, dun. The gun was the size of a freaking cannon, a Navy ship cannon. You know, but you guys remember that show, America's Dumbest Criminals, right? I think there's such a thing as America's Dumbest Arsonists. And as these arsonists be getting caught up and down, peppered across the United States of America on the left coast of America, we're starting to see how dumb they are. And in fact, later on in the, in the article, the, guy, the lady asked me, well, you know, he, I'm just passing through. And she says, what do you got in your hand? He has, he has matches. Hmm. Why do you have matches? And why are you passing through on my property? That's the question. What are those things that make you say, hmm, you know, long finger Arsenio Hall back in the day. Okay. Um, but the Oregon woman catches the arsonist red handed, you know, and I call this part of a vigilante squad, the arsonist task force, all these task forces popping in, you know, up all over the place. So let's call this the arsonist task force. I have a great video. Check this out. Clip number two, it's going to be this lady taking it into her hands, taking it to this criminal thug, trying to burn down her property. Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Right down. Get on the floor. Right down. Get on the floor. Right down. What are you doing in my property? I'm just passing through. I didn't know it was possible. Did you light anything on fire? No, ma'am. What are you doing with those matches on your head? I smoke. You smoke? Where are your fucking cigarettes? I have right now. Did you light anything up on fire? No. What's your name? My name is Corey Allen. You do 
you stay right there. I got the cops coming. Fine. He's got matches on his hand. Make sure you snap pictures of him. Did you go into the house? Caught red handed. They're out there causing fires. They start fires. They ravage through the fort. You know, they burn down everything. You know, burn down people's homes. No problem to see. Nope, yep. Not, I got a problem. Yeah, I'll burn down the home too. I'll burn that home down as well. As you ask them, get, the, get inside the mind of an arsonist. Why are you burning down the home? They don't know. They have no clue. They just want to push the narrative, though, that climate change and uh, it's causing the fires. No, I don't think so. It's little Timmy, you know, who didn't get called on, you know, when he lifted his hand in class. They didn't call on little Timmy. You know, Timmy, they were called, you know, Bronson or something like that. And he didn't get called on in school, you know. And little Timmy, you know, who, you know, got punked for his milk money, you know, when he was in junior high school. Maybe it's that guy. You know, it's little Timmy that couldn't have working at Kentucky Fried Chicken, so he got fired. You know what I mean? He's sitting on the bus stop and he's crying in his... You know, it's Pepsi or something like that. For all you Coke drinkers, maybe it's Coke. In fact, he was like, I don't like Coke. He cried in the Pepsi. <laughs> Pick your side. Anyways, but it's that guy. You know, maybe one day he'll be washing lettuce, like coming to America. Maybe he'll be on fries. He can't keep a job. But it's that guy that's causing these problems. So it's not climate change. Is the climate changing? Absolutely. Today, the climate was hotter. In the evening, you know, right about 5 o'clock, it got cooler. The climate changes all the time. What a novel concept. And we're still pushing this narrative to the American people, and it's very, very sad. You know, but I'm going to tell you what. Uh, that guy can probably grill, you know what I'm saying? You know, his solution to, to everything in his mind, I think, because she caught him red-handed, was, well, you know, I have to push the cause. I want Joe Biden to be elected. This is a fact of what's going on here. Ladies and gentlemen, these are Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders supporters. It is a fact. Solution. Grill the forest. It's me come walk outside your house. You smell that. What the heck's going on around here? I think somebody's, you know, cooking lettuce or something like that. Your whole backyard's ablaze. Fires and sparks, embers everywhere. You're trying to get your little tiny water holes. You know, that thing, you know, no, water's not coming out fast enough. But it's amazing. You know, just love the smell of the fresh smoked lumber. You know what I'm saying? Let's put that on a sandwich. You know, a little bit of Gouda. You know what I'm saying? Some little smoked wood shavings. Absolutely fantastic. Anyways. These people are absolutely fantastic uh, to, to sit and witness. You know, it's a lot of fun to laugh at them. But I do have a lot more guys on, on tap here. You know, remember I got the, the, the segment with the mass vigilantes. Of course, you guys know the mass vigilantes. They, they go and cause havoc. They cause problems, tearing down mass displays, you know, spitting in people's face, getting punched and beat up by people. <laughs> remember that guy uh, about three and a half, four weeks ago, about a month ago, guy comes and throws uh, coffee. She throws coffee in a guy's face. They're sitting down there with no mask on, eating burritos, and they were no mask people. You know, it's like the Capulets and the Montagues. Like I said, there's mask people and no mask people. My wife has a dimple on her chin. I don't. My son has a dimple on his chin. My middle daughter has a dimple on her chin. My, my upper, uh, older daughter has a dimple on her chin. I'm like, I have no dimple on my chin. So, you know, anyways, she says I'm jealous. We'll see about that. Anyways. But I, I see there's something going on. There's something in the air and it's seizing a change. Maybe? Hmm. Maybe I need a haircut. What do you guys think? Haircut? Hmm. Maybe a shave? You know, maybe it's time to experiment, you know, some the finest salted meats in the world. You know, the pepperoni and the, uh, the capicolas of the world. You know, don't really do ham too much, but I'll try some Black Forest ham. You know, that sounds kind of spooky, doesn't it? Since it's almost close to Halloween time, ooh, Black Forest. Why can't it be White Forest ham? Anyways, that's some white notes. Always irritated me, you know, but um, but something's been off a little late, especially with me, you know, and it's been happening in the pockets and their pockets are getting bolder. It's getting, it's getting bigger. It's getting crazy. And the mask, the mandates, the rules, the authority seekers, the overpowering governors, the looters having the five finger discount at America's expense. You know, guys, that over two billion. Uh, a report just came out um, that over $2 billion in damages from looting. Now, let this sink in for a second. What do you guys think about this for a second? Over $2 billion, with a B. You have to say that, right? 
No, he said two million. Look here, we're gonna get you a miracle air for Christmas. Two billion with a B. They've done lots of damages, guys. And so if you're gonna have a, a, a purpose or a cause, like Black, like Black Lives Matter, you wanna make sure that that purpose of the cause is serving the greater American people, right? John, Tom, would you like the greater American people to serve? Yeah, no, Tom's like, yeah, he agrees with me. So does Becky, so does Amber. They all agree with me, the host, that uh, Black Lives Matter, if you're going to be out here in America, you should probably be in a position to where you're doing good. But to do two billion dollars, oh, just hurts you to the core, right? That money can do a whole lot more good. Think about the senior citizens out there that need things, assistance, money, special needs kids. There's so many good things we can do, but you guys are tearing up stuff. The statues, uh, clawing up the Constitution, just like that Persian kitten. And this kitten is overweight, and he's now tearing at my cashmere sweater. My beautiful cashmere sweater feels so good. You want to say cashmere, cashmere. You want to say it just like that, right? And that's our, the Democrats. And people tear up the Constitution, but they're tearing down the country, stolen goods. Imagine that, $2 billion, the $2 billion finger discount. I had the five finger discount. Remember that one? You go in a store, you come in there and look around, slide stuff in your pocket, and then you're out and you're opening the candy bar, enjoying it in the parking lot, making sure you weren't seen by the cameras. That's what I'm talking about. But I'll never use the five-finger discount ever again. I'm humiliated. Two billion dollars. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen. And amidst all this, people seem to find time to make arch enemies friends, drinking buddies. Put down the drink for a purpose and go back to drinking a little bit later. You know, makes you want to get out and target somebody. You know, do something for the customers and employees and friendly shoppers. You know, looking to buy a little shirt and you know, people out there having fun or people shopping just for instance, people that are out there shopping. Let's just say that people are shopping and you want to go and you want to buy a pair of slacks for your boyfriend for his birthday. And ladies and gentlemen, they're back. They're vicious, they're spry, and they're ready to go. But there is a flip side to it, kind of like the Superman character. You know, the other side, he's wearing black. I've always liked the opposite Superman, the opposite Spider-Man. They just look tighter, right? They got like similar moves, but they got different moves too as well. Exciting, exciting stuff. But ladies and gentlemen, they're back and they're vicious. And they're mean. I'm talking about Mean Girls Part 3, the mask exposers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a different breed. They're popping up all over the place, and this is so exciting. Clap your hands, everybody. You know, it's kind of like that prank, you know what I'm saying? You try on your friends, masterfully, and it fails. You know, I'm looking at this video that I'm about to play, and it's so fantastic. You know, it's like that skateboard trick. You know, you, you're going hard, you try to do that little trick right there, all of a sudden you're at the dentist. Ouch! and you're eating ice for like three or four days. Just a side note, the best ice, ladies and gentlemen, if you want ice, go over to AMPM. They have the best crushed ice, hands down. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and suck away, suck on that piece of ice. You'll suck your brains out. Oh, Circle K too as well. Guys, plug for you guys. You guys should be excited about that. But yes, you know, it's not convincing. You know, they're going and they're like, you know, uh, you know, there's enthusiastic cheers. Like, yeah, you like feel it, you're like in your soul. You're sleeping in the middle of the night, you wake up, they cheer so hard, it's disturbing your sleep the night of the cheer that you heard. And then the next night, too, it might carry over. It might be part two of the cheer nightmare. Um, but this kind of wasn't convincing. It was kind of laughable a little bit, but key to them. This is fantastic. But, you know, I was looking at it and definitely it, it, it didn't get me motivated. It was kind of like that, that Camp Chippewa movie in the 1993 Adams Family. You guys remember the guys, the, uh, the camp directors, they're all happy. So like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Listen up, everybody. I'm Gary Granger. And I'm Becky Martin Granger. We're the honors and directors here at Camp Chippewa, America's foremost facility for privileged young adults. And we're all here to learn, to grow, and to just plain have fun. Because that's what being privileged is all about. That was really inspiring. That was just bone chilling, inspiring, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sure you guys are really excited about that one right there. Um, <laughs> but and but the, the contrast to what I saw uh, when I looked at this video here was just so amazing. And like I said, once again, people have the right to express their First Amendments to freedom of speech. But I, you know, it kind of makes me kind of uncomfortable when you go into establishments and you start causing a little bit of a ruckus. You just scared 98 year old. Gertrude over there and she doesn't have a heart attack medicine with her today and you guys are screaming and cheering She's walking with her walker and all she wants is to get some Geritol and some Pepsodent for her dentures That's it. But yeah, anyways, but the contrast between the two 
you know, they get started singing, first of all. And, and you've got this reminiscent look of Twisted Sister, you know, spandex, big hair, you know, glister and glitter all over the place, walking in slow motion. That's what you kind of think, right? And they're singing a song, we're not gonna take it. Let's just jump in the time machine, like back to, back to the future with Michael J. Fox, go back to 1985, 1986, and 1984 in that matter. Guys, it's 2020, you couldn't pick a better song than that. How about Bette Midler, Wind Beneath My Wings? That's a good one, right? I like that song. Um, how about uh, Gloria Gaynor? I will survive. I've never liked that song. Ew, ew, ew. Uh, and guys, people that like it, I'm sorry. Don't mean to be offensive, but just never floated my boat. You know, yeah, you will survive. You know, if you, if you, you survive in between meals, don't you? You ate here and, 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 and you didn't eat for a while and you got, you know, you need to replenish yourself. You ate meals again, right? You had a little boyfriend, you broke up and you got another boyfriend again. So don't worry about it. Of course you will survive. Anyways, with that song, I'll be stroking. Oof disgusting song anyways but how about um any of these songs if you use it like a carry a bad karaoke night any of these songs would be a complete tragedy like when frieza killed uh one of these opponents father and then he said it's a tr such a tragedy you know your father was killed by a, a, a energy blast you're the one who did it and that's exactly what the democrats are doing they're attempting to kill this country with these energy blasts but in this video though as you can see it is so funny um they are out of their wits check this out right here clip number three all right hit it Woo! girls mask all right we're Woo! tired of shopping with masks on and now That's hilarious. And so way to go, guys. Those are the anti-mask vigilantes. And they're like, America, breathe. And what's happening? What you guys are starting to see? Americans, it was a 15-day protocol that we were supposed to follow. 15 days, ladies and gentlemen. We're like eight months into this whole ordeal, this pandemic thing, which is easing off. And so we need to learn how to live with it and make sure that we get good information out there to people so they know that this pandemic, you know, you protect those who um, are most vulnerable, so to speak. You want to protect those who are vulnerable. So, and that's all I got to say about that. But on the other news, Kamala Harris, <clears throat> let's call her the Kamala, the climate vice president and presidente. Vice President Kamala Harris of climate change. You know, as the neighboring states, Oregon and Washington are burning as well. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I got to take the opportunity here to, to talk about Kamala Harris because she is pushing the narrative too as well. Just like Gavin Newsom, the narrative that climate change is causing the fires. You guys see and testified to what I just read and what you saw earlier. Who's causing the fires? Now, I, I believe that, you know, every single season, I lived in California before, and every single year we'd have these fires that burned every single year, and they broke out um, all over the place. And I would always wonder, and you would see these movies, and you see a little piece of glass or a magnif magnifying glass, and so whenever a fire would break up when I was younger, I would think that a magnifying glass fell out someone's pocket. Maybe it was Timmy's magnifying glass. He fell out the pocket, and then the sun hit it, and it started the forest fire. I don't know. But I would think about that. And so they have an opportunity to blame the forest fires and on climate change. And so little Timmy, you know, in his little starting habits, Timmy can grill a great hamburger too, I bet, you know. But over on Breitbart, here we go again. You look at the picture over on Breitbart and she and Gavin, Gavin, um, Gavin Newsom, Gavin, Gavin Newsom, you know, sometimes you get tongue tied, right? They're standing there and they're talking about the, the climate change. And she says, <laughs> Gavin Newsom says, she gets it. She really, really gets it. She gets what? That climate change is the biggest hoax ever? Like I said, the climate always changes all the time. But just two days after California Governor Gavin Newsom thanked President Donald Trump for his help during the tour of the wildfire devastation of the state, he met with the Democratic vice president candidate Kamala Harris and praised her in her embrace of climate change as a cause of the blazes. Think about that. He's playing both sides. He's on that side. He's on that side. Let's make him a tennis ball. <laughs> right? I want to thank you and acknowledge the work that you have done to be uh, the um, 
to the, uh, the immediate in your response, Newsom told Trump during Monday's meeting at Sacramento McKilling Airport. Newsom said in response to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA has been profoundly significant. That's a long name right there. But Tuesday, when Newsom met with Harris, the two were united in a belief that climate change was responsible for the deadly fires. You notice they don't say responsible for some of the deadly fires. They don't say responsible for a few of the forest fires. No, responsible for the forest fires. That is the narrative you're supposed to believe. You're going to believe that. Sit down and shut up. That's what they say. So Harris also toured Fresno County where uh, the creek fire leveled homes, leaving only chimneys standing. Isn't that amazing? The chimney, how strong they are. Well, of course, they burn wood. And so the, the, the thing is, that so you go there and all you see is all these chimneys. But pray for the people that are having these problems with fires. But Kamala Harris and them, they're just disgraceful, these, disgraceful, these guys, with uh, pushing of the narratives. Um, on to more news. So, <laughs> Joe Biden's in that camp too, ladies and gentlemen, right there in that camp with, you know, the narrative of the climate change. And, you know, also too, if we think about it, you have Bernie Sanders and, uh, and all the elk, ALC and everyone over there, uh, Sandra Cortez, all those guys over there, they also think the same way too. And they want pl planes to fly with big old giant batteries. Sometimes we have rate restrictions on airplanes. I just thought about this right now. But imagine having this big old giant Duracell. Doom, doom, doom. You know, Duracell clothes. You see like the inside of the, of the what's called. I see the inside of the battery and I see the plane pl uh, plashing into the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, splashing into the Atlantic Ocean. That's absolutely nonsensical. And they're talking about making that happen in less than 10 years. Have you guys seen Star Trek? For us to get the iPad, it took this long. And it took me about 15 years ago. I realized like, oh, we're almost in the Star Trek ages. But they're like light years away. But, you know, they're both outside. Her and Gavin Newsom. You know, no air, no pollen. But wait a minute, you know. They're taking pictures with a little mask on their face. You know, social distancing. And they're trying to keep that mindset in the party going of coronavirus at its heights. Uh, which is uh, just... A tragedy. But Joe Biden or the news. I call it liar liar. Biden's pants are filled with fire. You know, here goes, you know, the, the, the that Joe Biden again, you know, the campaign of Donald Trump. He's releasing this this uh, video and, and I'm going to show you a clip of the video. It's just disgusting because it's absolutely lies. And this is the reason why we need more people out here uh, distributing true content with conservative values that you know, you don't have to be a conservative just if you love your country if you want america to function and be the most powerful machine in the world uh you want president donald trump to be elected but he's comparing the 2017 uh campaign things that donald trump said uh when he was first president uh and and then he compares them and comparables and puts them together to where we are in a pandemic state and we have states that are on lockdowns. We have economies that are affected because of the pandemic. We have um, situations where people are laid off, or unemployed. And so, yeah, there is a problem, but you're making it seem like Donald Trump has this problem because of bad management or poor management in the White House. The whole world is locked down. And so on this pandemic plague, it's plagued the world, you know, plaguing the whole world, guys, plaguing the whole world. Imagine that. But let's play a game. You know, let's, let's say it's like, where's Waldo? Remember the little hat? He had a little fuzzy ball. You know, I used to like looking at those books around about Christmas time. You know, the world's where's Waldo? And you try to find him. You got the big old glasses. I've actually seen people that look like, where's Waldo? And you walk up to them. And no name tag or anything like that. In fact, no, let's say they're, 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 they're um, let's say they work at a, uh, at a department store. And his name is uh, Jim. He walks up to him and like, you know, how you doing, Waldo? <laughs> or no, you call him, where's Waldo? You know, he's like, what are you talking about? And, he, and, and it's winter time, so he has his hat on too. It's just awesome. But the whole world was in a pandemic. But let's 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 see if we can spot the lie. Um, cut number four, please. He failed to act. So now Trump and his allies are launching negative attacks against Joe Biden to hide the truth. Here are the facts. Joe Biden warned the nation in January that Trump had left us unprepared for a pandemic. Then, Biden told Trump he should insist on having American health experts on the ground in China. I would be on the phone with China and making it clear, we are going to need to be in your country. You have to be open. You have to be clear. We have to know what's going on. But Trump rolled over for the Chinese. He took their word for it. The president tweeted, China has been working very hard to contain the coronavirus. The United States greatly appreciates their efforts and transparency. China, I spoke with President Xi, and they're working very, very very hard 
and I think it's going to all work out fine. Trump praised the Chinese 15 times in January and February as the coronavirus spread across the world. It's a tough situation. I think they're doing a very good job. Are you concerned about the potential impact on the global economy? I think that China will do a very good job. Trump never got a CDC team on the ground in China. And the travel ban he brags about? Trump let in 40,000 travelers from China into America after he signed it. Not exactly airtight. Look around. How about Joe Biden? You can tell when he's puzzled. He gets this look on his face and this dumb look, right? This puzzled look like, you know, someone spilled my soup. It was me, but I forgot that I spilled my soup. This look like this here. want to be their president joe biden guy has a so that look right that's awesome um but on, but on the sports other sport, sports news ladies we've got some good sports news <laughs> so exciting i'm i'm excited about mike tyson yes ladies and gentlemen iron mike mighty tyson is on a comeback he's coming back ladies and gentlemen and uh he's uh looking to be paired up with roy jones you know but let me tell you something about mike tyson he's the the words and the language that he's using over here and the language that Roy Jones is using over there, something's not connecting. Because Mike Tyson's, you know, he's punched drunk like a boxer that didn't hear the bell. And he's going in for blood, I'm telling you what. And he has Roy Jones Jr. a little on the edge for some reason. And I wonder why. Hmm. That's really funny. But over at, uh, where do we go here? Yeah, Roy Jones over at Fox News. Roy Jones on Mike Tyson's exhibition match. Now, it's supposed to be an exhibition Eight rounds of boxing fury, people just pummeling each other. But you know, exhibition and the real fight and fighting for the title are two different things. And so the contrast and the difference you want to make sure you understand that difference. Roy Jones Jr. on Mike Tyson's exposition match. I made a mistake going in with him. Tyson is still one of the strongest, most explosive people who ever touched boxing ring, a uh, boxing ring, Jones said. Check out what Jones said here, and I think he's getting little noodles in his boots. And He's starting to slide all over the place. Mike Tyson returned to boxing in November. It's supposed to be the exhibition match, but Roy Jones Jr. is worried he made a mistake. Uh, the C CSAC executive director, Andy Foster, first said when the match was announced in July that about uh, between the two legendary fighters wasn't about taking each other's head off. Yeah, it wasn't about taking each other's head off. It was about getting there and sparring a little bit. And you guys remember, you guys see the little fights. How about the Rocky movies? Uh, Apollo Creed, those in for the exhibition fight, and, you know, do those little things, stuff like that. Well, he goes in there with, uh, who was it? Was it Mr. T was fighting? Oh, yeah. He didn't walk out the ring. That didn't work out too good for him. Fumbles. But they weren't supposed to be taking their heads off. Um, and they said they, they can get into a, a little bit of a, a, a scuffle, you know, just a little bit. But they don't want people to get hurt is what they're basically saying. They don't want people to get hurt. Uh, you know the deal at the same time. But Jones seemed to be concerned that Tyson didn't get the memo. <laughs> Goes right there to Tyson's door. He's like excited. like, what is this? Some kind of paper. He sits it down, goes back training. <laughs> he didn't get the memo, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Tyson's going in for blood. And I'll tell you what, not blindfolded either. He's like that pit bull and he's ready. And so he said, Jones seemed to be concerned that Tyson didn't get the memo. Telling Sky Sports over the weekend, he may have made a mistake. He's still Mike Tyson, one of the strongest, most explosive people. And guys, have you seen that video? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I see Mike Tyson hitting his trainer, almost knocking his trainers out. He hit him. You know, like, Poof, was, you, know you have to grab your teeth. You, you know, well, that's what you'll be doing. If Mike Tyson hits you, you will be grabbing your teeth in a daze off of the floor like little chiclets with blood surrounding them. You will be picking yourself up. That's what you'll see. But think about it, ladies and gentlemen, the exhibition fight, you know, and um, it's a match. And to me, it's like, you know, like playing cops and robbers. I played cops. My little, you know, one of my little friends, he's like 12 years old. Let's call him Robbie. Robbie plays cops too. Well, I got a little water pistol. I'm tough. My water pistol looks tough. I mean, like a real gun too. It's hard. Got the little, you know, pink little nozzle. <laughs> I got my little camo, put the little, what's when people put the stuff on their eyes? They sit there and put that stuff on their eyes. Why do you do that? You know, playing football, you're playing inside an arena and you're putting the stuff on like you're about to go to war. That just boggles the mind. Oh, I don't want the light to get in my eyes. Look here, bro. Anyways, if they do it, hey, if it works, I guess I'm not going to knock that. But I have a little water pistol. Well, he has a 44 Magnum. And I squeeze at him. A little water goes across the barrel like that. 
he shoots, oh, yeah, and he takes me out. Yeah, that's Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is the 44 Magnum. Roy Jones is the water pistol. And obviously, you see what goes on. That cannon, that beast, that pit bull going for the blood, attempting to recapture his younger days. <laughs> Fighting and boxing, bobbing and weaving. Mike Tyson going in for the kill. That's what he looks to do. And as I looked at one of the pictures too, it's so funny, he had like the three little pictures when he was younger. Uh, he's trying to recapture his heyday. So what what will happen if he gets into the ring with Roy Jones and gets KO'd in the first round? Well, Mike, it's supposed to be an exhibition fight. Well, I didn't get the memo. It came to your mailbox. Anyways, over at the Federalist. Um, that's good news, guys. That's so much fun. But got more news over at the Federalist. And uh, Roy Jones. Uh, over at the Federalist, uh, there's a study up to 95% of the riots, so I was talking about earlier the, the billions of dollars that has been um, linked into the damage. Uh, the study up to 95% of the 2020 uh, US riots are linked to Black Lives Matter. So we have the damage first, and now we have what really happened, where the damage comes from, the $2 billion. It's really sad that we're living in a state nowadays to where um, people are damaging our country. Over at the Federalist, um, it said, contrary to corporate media narratives, up to 95% of the summer's riots are linked to Black Lives Matter's activism, according to data collected by the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Protection. I love how they put these letters together. Everything's an acronym. You know, I had a boss who used to work for Intel, and I remember talking to him, and everything was an acronym, and I was like, what did you say? And he, you know, he said, I give me the data. Is it data or is it data? I don't know. Use the word, tomato, tomato. <clears throat> but the data also showed that nearly 6% or more than one in 20 U.S. protests between May 26th and, 26th and September 5th involved in rioting, looting, and similar violence, including 47 fatalities. People are 47. Let that sink in, ladies and gentlemen. Let that sink into your cerebellum. And for you people who want to go to the extreme left, let it sink into your titanium skull cap. Okay? 47 fatalities. People are dying because of this cause. Earlier, I said it should always be something that is good. It should be for a cause that's going to further enhance America, further strengthen the Constitution, further make us better uh, citizens. But the ACLED, almost like LED TV, is a nonprofit organization that tracks across the globe everything. So this is what they do. So ladies, don't fall for the okie doke that everything is everything these guys are doing damage they're taking lives and they're taking this country down a path that we necessarily don't want to go down it's horrible so but that's all i have for this week for our first video podcast i'm glad that the butterflies that were floating in my stomach finding formation they've kind of found a form and that form is a tack formation for you guys here in america thank you for joining me i am your host johnny on the mid week review see you guys next week